One of the things that he told me he says that up until the 1800s, certain practices that were being used by the Egyptians were still thought of as being relevant in the 1800s. It was just with modern medicines and modern thinking came in mm. that you know, these things were, were, were set aside. Okay. Um, so that is Sekhmet. Good, right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Grand. Not dull. Uh, dreary. Oh, old gosh. fashioned. Yeah, right. Well, that's my first. That was my first thing. You know, when I see that, when I saw this place, I thought, oh, no, no, no. Um, if you want to have a wee look at this photograph here, this was a photograph that was taken when the building opened in uh, 83. It's still on show, uh, on sale. And it, ha it shows you it with some lights in it. This is how it was originally shown. In the, in, the, in, the, in the building. Yeah, it's a right. lot lighter than it It's a lot lighter because of these lights. This is a replica of the room that was in Hutton Castle, the drawing room in Hutton Castle. Right? Mm -hmm. The main difference is that this wall here, right, with the window, was actually over at that side there. It was over there. Yep. They've swapped the wall. Gasson has swapped the walls simply to allow some more light to come into the building. Yeah. Right? We've got light from the, the, the windows up here, but quite often you will come in here and the light curtains will be closed right. just because we're not allowed to have a lot of light. But you have to use your imagination and, and think of knickknacks like photographs, personal photographs lying around, um, flowers, you know, all these sort of things. And I'm told that that wall there was south facing, so it got a lot of sunshine coming in. You'll notice that we have the carpets missing. Right? I'm in the process of getting a, a photograph of Hutton Castle, of, the, of this room when it was in Hutton Castle. And it's, it looks even darker, but the, the floor's covered in carpet, different rugs. Mm. Right? Uh, up until about four, four months ago or so, four, maybe, well, about four months ago, maybe five months now, we had, didn't have any uh, tapestries. They'd taken the tapestries away uh, f and they'd been away for years. The reason I used to tell people we didn't have any tapestries or carpets, I used to say that moths would come in here and it was like a lunchbox to them. They would think, yeah, we can eat in here, right? And they had a great moth, a terrible moth problem. So that's why all these things had been taken away. They've managed to get that under control and that's why the, the um, tapestries are back. But the carpets aren't. They're, quite a few of them are up at the far end of the building. We can look at them as well. But this is how Hutton lived. Um, he has his medieval uh, fireplace. fireplace, Gothic statues and woodwork, right? All these are things. These are 16, 1700 uh, pieces of, and um, some 15, uh, it's, uh, 1500 pieces of, um, of wood. Uh, for you know the, the, the chairs and things like that, um, but this is how you know in a sort of stately home Gothic fashion, the chandeliers are um, from Hutton Castle. They were designed for Hutton Castle. These aren't old, old, but they were designed in the Gothic fashion. Curtains came from Hutton as well. They once again they were they were made for Hutton Castle. But when you came to stay, and this is where I, I find difficult to believe. When you came to stay, because he had kind of weekends where he would invite friends. They weren't quite raucous parties, but he would invite friends. When you came to stay, I'm told that you were given matches and candles when you arrived. And you're thinking, well, there's electricity throughout the house. There's central heating in the family, in the, you know, the family quarters. Mm. There's hot and cold running water throughout the building, even in the servants' quarters. Right? So... Why do we need candles? Well, apparently, in every room there was a box, and in the box was a switch, and the box was kept locked. And if you wanted to switch on the lights, you had to get the key to unlock the box to switch on. He was green before his time. <laughs> he knew the price of electricity. He knew how much it cost, and he kept that under control. And at 10 o'clock, I'm told that when he and his wife go out to bed, he had a master switch, <laughs> and that's when you needed your, you know... 
I mentioned the carpets and I mentioned that guy, uh, Kenneth Clark, and he was visiting one time and Hutton apparently came in and caught him doing on his knees looking at this beautiful rug. And he said to him, if you think that's nice, lad, look at the ones underneath. And he had another couple of rugs underneath these beautiful Persian carpets. He had them piled up on his floor. The man had so much stuff. He had it in outhouses, he had it in garages. He needed to give it away. Right? He needed to, you know, to do something with it. Um, so, beautiful pieces. And as I say, all the tapestries. Just, as a, just in passing, the two tapestries here, we have three pieces of this tapestry. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Turin... It doesn't matter whether it's called. But the, the important thing is that there are only ten known pieces of this in the world. And we have three of them. We've got two in this room, and the third is very similar to this, a wee bit smaller, I think. It's in the hall. Right? Okay. It's in display in the hall. So we have three of the ten. The other seven are scattered throughout the world. And they are the oldest armorial tapestries known to exist. Right? They were made in the 1300s. Wow. Right? So we have three parts of it. And that's that's the standard, that's the quality of the tapestries that we have in our collection. We have hundreds of pieces and they are all world-class pieces. Uh, we, 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 the, the, only, the only building in, in Britain that rivals is, is the V&A. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, Many pieces of gold in the collection, but this is one of the, the most attractive pieces. Um, I'll show you this and I'll tell you what it is. There are two women, and can you see between the two, between the two women, which beside the one on the left, there's a heron, a bird. Mm -hmm. Can yep. you see that? Yep. If I show you this picture here, that's why I said you could pick up one of these. It's actually larger, right? And it's a better picture. You can see the heron here. Yep. And the heron is the symbol for Athena, the goddess Athena, mm -hmm. who's thought to be this woman here. Right. And this is thought to be Medusa. Now, there are two stories about Medusa. Do you know any, mm -hmm. any of them? The one with the snake heads. Yes. Right. The, that's the one that always ends up, right? But the older version is that she's one of three sisters who are Gorgons. Right? There's no real explanation as to how they go it that way. Right? But in later years, and I'm talking later as you know, like 300 BC, mm -hmm. right? um, in later years, the story kind of turned a wee bit that Athena uh, got angry with uh, Medusa. Medusa was a beautiful woman, and she knew it. And she boasted about her beauty, and she boasted about her beauty, and she boasted about her beauty. And then she had an affair, and she... Well, it depends on who you hear. Either she had an affair with Poseidon and got married to him, or he raped her, and then he got married to her. Either way, the stories got back to Athena that uh, she was making out as if she was better than Athena. And Athena decided to put a curse on her. And the curse was that her beautiful hair... Snakeheads. became snakes and if any, and if milky skin turned green and any anyone who looked on her turned to stone right now the older story the moral of that is and I think that's that's what's coming through on this particular piece is you see her looking at herself in a mirror can mm -hmm. you see what she's yep. holding up yep. and it's beware of vanity right don't be vain because the gods will get back to you right no. You know, they'll get you, at the, they'll get you at the end of the day. But this is one of the pieces that was taken down to London, to the uh, the Bonham collection, um, which was uh, it was put uh, put on between December and January uh, last year and this year. Um, they they peri cherry picked about 50 of the best pieces in the collection, some of which aren't usually out on show, so you didn't get to see them. Um, but they managed to get them out the vaults. They took them down to London, and they had a. a an exhibition on down at Bonham's to, to show off these particular pieces. Okay. Lovely piece. Thank you. Thank you.
You all right? Yep, I'm great. Let's look at this piece here. It's um, Eurasian, right? And it's, which is part of, it's now a uh, modern day Armenia. Okay, that's mm -hmm. it there, right? And this is a piece from a cauldron, and this is how it would have looked when okay. it was in piece. It would have been forged, uh, moulded separately, and then it would have been attached to the, you know, to the pot. Um, we have a we have a pot further down that's the same a cauldron further down that's the same sort of idea. The people here were renowned for making bronze. They had a very good supply of copper. So they were renowned for making copper, uh, for making bronze items. Um, we, we get most of the information about them from the Assyrians because the Assyrians invaded them and took over the, took over the country. But one of the reasons I'm telling you about this is um, the historical part it has in the collection. When Burrell died, they came across 28 wee school jotters, just ordinary. They're called technically they're called the, the purchase books, right? And in those purchase books, from 1911, he had personally drawn columns and written in information about nigh on every single item that he bought, okay. large and small. Right. In the columns, the columns were made up how much he paid for it, how much the postage and packaging was, who he bought it from, um, insurance, uh, a wee bit of a description about it, information that is so good for the, the curators, you know, to, to, to find out things. Some of the things he was a wee bit kind of wary, he was a wee bit kind of vague about. Uh, for example, he would maybe he's maybe bought several statues of St Catherine, and he'll just say St Catherine Stone, and they don't know which St Catherine. You know, it's yeah. that sort, of, and they have to work out by the years and you know look at old catalog auction catalogs and try to find out which St Catherine matches up with that. But the very last column, that's the one, Jim, that really always gets me. We thin column at the end of the page, and that's where he put his initials. Every single piece. A wee bit of information about it, and then, yeah, that's correct. He was signing it off. And I've been told that this was the very last piece in his own handwriting that it was written into the purchase books. He lost his eyesight deteriorated at about 57. And he died in 58. And for the last year, um, I think some things were put in on somebody else wrote in for him. Um, but the last piece that was actually in his in Burrell's handwriting, apparently, was this piece here. Okay. Um, remember the play school? Yeah, well, yes, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, let's go through the... Yeah, square and round and all that. Right. Well, I'm not going to say that, but if you want to go through, we'll go through the narrowest arch in the building. <laughs> uh, can you remember where it came from? No, don't look at that. Which was collection? Yeah, Hurst. Hutton. Hurst. 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 Oh, yeah, Hurst, Hurst. yeah. Uh, it came from the Hurst collection. America. So, uh, so we'll breathe in. <laughs> I always, I always, I, I, I instinctively walk. <laughs> you know. Very quick look at this. Right. If you go around this side, you get a much better view. Right. This beautiful red silk petticoat, right, is covered in flowers. Okay. We think the Scottish connection is the thistle. Okay. Yep. It was made. They reckon between 1610 and 1620. That was um, during the reign of James I of England and VI of Scotland, Mary Queen of Scots boy, right, that took over the throne. It was then passed, we believe, to their son, Charles, who lost his head. Charles gave it to one of his grooms, right? And if you look at the flowers, the flowers all have different meanings, right? Can you point out any flowers? You recognise it? Marigold. They're marigold. Mary's gold. 
right? That's a, that's a breakdown of the name. It's a it was a traditional flower in bouquets, and it was for innocence. Can you see the oak? Can you see the, the acorns? Mm -hmm. Right. You get, from acorns you get oak. Right. How long do oak last? Years and years, right? I want to be with you for a long time. If you look up, you have hazel. Both of these are pagan symbols. Funnily enough, so is the, the marigold, right? Before it was marigold, it was so called something else, and it was a pagan flower. But the hazel here, if you think of the branches of the hazel, they're twisted and they're hard. Protection, I will protect you, right? As opposed to the honeysuckle, the tendrils in that are soft. I want you close to me. I want to hold you close to me. We have pansies. Down here, right? Mm -hmm. That's from the French word pensée, which means to think. Right? We have strawberries, large strawberries over here. Mm -hmm. um, they're for passion and for fertility. Right? When you see the small wild strawberries, these are for wild passionate love. Right? And if you follow it round, we have a flower called borage, which was a flower that used to be given to people if they were going away. You know, to you know, to be, you're in my thoughts. That sort of idea. But when you see the two of them together like that, it was believed that the two plants, if you planted the both of those together, they grew very well together. So it was like a marriage, right? Two plants, totally different, coming together and working well together. So it's basically a big love letter. You also have pea pods. I don't know whether you can see any of the pea pods, and they're for fertility. Um, and as I say, it was passed. It was a, it was made professionally. Uh, we that much we, we we do reckon it wasn't. A, this wasn't a, a private thing. And um, we have passion flowers as well, kicking about somewhere. I think these are the passion flower here. What's the bird for? Well, if you look, all of the birds have.